360 degree spins. One of the first and most basic tricks that you'll ever learn in flowboarding. They can also be one of the most frustrating to learn. Well, today we're gonna show you how to do these things and we're also gonna break it down into every little detail. So if this interests you, hang around and we'll show you everything. Hey Flowboarders, if you're new to this channel, my name is Andy Broder and I'm a two-time national Flowboard Tour champion in the Masters Division. I've had the privilege of riding with some of the best Flowboarders in the world and I created this instructional channel to make you a better Flowboarder by showing you the best tricks and tips that I've learned over the years. These videos are basically the videos that I wish I had when I started riding. Today we're going to be talking about 360 degree backside spins. We'll show you how to do the spins using your hand in the water to get you turning and also without using your hand at all. Then we'll show you how to do multiple spins all over the wave. So let's break it all down. Before we get started, I want to get the definition of torque out of the way. Torque is a turning or rotational force. So when we are doing 360s, we're creating torque to get that board rotation going. The first step in learning 360s will be putting your hand in the water because that's a really easy way to get your body spinning. This will allow you to get used to the spinning motion and keeping your downward edges up as you rotate around. Once you get used to the spinning motion, then you can concentrate on learning how to generate torque without using your hand in the water because that's much more complicated. To do these, bend down and place your hand into the water next to you, not really behind you, which will start you spinning. Now, as you spin, you'll always need to keep the edge that is facing the bottom of the flow rider upward so that the water doesn't catch the edge and pull the board out from under you. As you spin perpendicular to the current, put more weight on your toes to keep your heel edge up. As you get backwards and parallel to the current, shift more your weight onto your nose foot. Don't stay in this position too long because it's a tough position to ride in with your foot all the way at the edge of the tail. This is a really common area where people get stuck and you may want to use a snowboard stance the first few times until you're able to get through this position without getting caught there. If you do get caught there, then you'll probably wipe out after a few seconds. Rotate another 90 degrees while shifting your weight onto your heels, keeping your toe edge up. As your skill level improves, Shifting your edges correctly as you spin will become unconscious muscle memory, but at first you really need to think about it. As you come around so that the nose of the board is facing the bottom of the flow rider, you can stop by dropping your backhand into the water somewhat behind you like a rudder on a boat. When you're doing normal riding, most of your weight is towards the back of your board. It's usually 60% on your back, 40% in the front. That's because you're really riding the tail of your board. But when you start circling, you're going to be circling around the midpoint of your board. So what happens is you need to shift your weight more towards the front. Now what's going to happen is you're going to put 60% of your weight towards your front foot and only 40% of your weight in the back. And that's going to help you while you're circling. Now eventually, when you come around and you're ready to stop, what's going to happen is, as you start facing forward in the wave, you're going to shift your weight towards your back once again. You're going to go 60% in the back now, 40% in the front, so you want to go much heavier towards your tail at this point. Now, just a note here. If you put your hand in the water to do a 360 in a contest, the judges will notice and they will deduct points for using your hand. But that being said, I also want to show you a really great trick using hand assisted 360s. This is Jada, who was one of the flow guards that taught me how to ride back in the day. She was a competition rider and used hand assisted 360s in her runs in a really cool way. Check this out. She goes up the wave, ollies over the channel, 
comes down the wave, reaches down and grabs water with both hands as she does three spins back up the wave, then comes back down. Let's check it out in slow motion. She comes up the wave, she ollies over the entire wake, comes straight back down the wave, does a really sharp carve, then bends down with both hands to get herself spinning as she goes back up the wave spinning three times and then comes out of it pretty clean. This is a great trick and a great line she does doing it. Very cool. So that's all there really is for assisted 360s. Now let's talk about 360s where you don't use your hand. With these 360s, you're gonna to need to learn how to generate rotation without putting your hand in the water. The biggest question is how do you generate the torque to get that rotation? There are a few things that will contribute to getting rotation for the spin. And you're gonna to need to learn how to combine all of these things together to produce a flowing 360 where you go from carving into a 360 and then carve back out of it seamlessly. Here are some of the things that will help you create torque. Number one, pressure from a heel side carve. Number two, upper body twist. Number three, arm motion. Number four, shifting board edges. Each one of these occurs at a different point in the rotation. So we'll divide up the 360 and break down where each one of these occur. The only exception to this is the shifting board edges. You'll be shifting your board edges throughout the entire 360 to not only maintain, but to actually increase the rotational speed. It's really something that you'll have to develop the feeling for over time with lots of practice. Now, let's talk about the first half of the 360 because that's where your torque will be created. Make sure that you're good at carving and splashing water as those will teach you how to push against the pressure of the water and it's that pressure of the water that will provide the initial torque to get the rotation going. Just as we stick our hand into the water on hand assisted 360s and use the water pressure against our hand to start the spin, we're now replacing our hand with the tail of the board and using the pressure of the water against the tail of the board to start the spinning motion. Now when we're just carving, our upper body and arms move in the opposite direction of the nose of the board and we're going to take advantage of that to start our 360. To start the rotation, you first need to do an extra hard carve in the opposite direction of the spin. This will be towards your left side or your heel side. You're also going to be doing an extra hard upper body twist in the direction of the spin. When we're just doing normal carving, our hands wind up in front of our body. But as we're going to do a 360 spin, we have to really throw our upper body and our arms and our head as deep as possible into the direction of the spin as we can. Your head will be looking towards the back of the flow rider. It's almost like you're winding up. Now you're going to start unwinding. Using the pushback of the water, your board and lower body will start to move in the direction of the spin. At the same time, you'll be pulling your arms back in the opposite direction of the spin. You're actually making the motion as if you're grabbing something in the air and pulling it back into yourself. So your hands will have started in this position and now they're gonna wind up in this position. At this point, you're halfway through your 360. So once again, to quickly summarize the first half of the spin, you're gonna be pushing off the water using the tail of your board and at the same time, wind up your upper body. And then what's gonna happen is your lower body will start to follow and unwind. And that's gonna get you halfway through your spin. So let's get back to the spin. You're now halfway through your spin and you should have good rotational speed going. The next 90 degrees is gonna be really easy because your rotational momentum will take you through it and you'll start to face the front of the wave. Now what you need to do is apply the brakes to stop the spin. Stopping the rotation. I always found that the hardest part of spinning is actually stopping the spin. When I first started doing them, I didn't know how to stop, so I kept doing 360s until eventually my momentum wore off or I did about three spins, got dizzy, caught an edge, and just fell off the board. But the proper way to get out of them is to carve out of them and actually get back into a good carving rhythm. 
So what you're trying to do as you come around is you're actually trying to angle the board in the position where the water is hitting the board and actually pushing it in the opposite direction of the spin. You're actually trying to carve against the direction of the spin. Where this occurs is when you're coming around for the last quarter of the spin and you're perpendicular to the current. Then you want to shift your weight from the center of the board to 50-50 between your feet and dig your heel edge into the current. Now the angle of the board will push against the current to stop your spin. The next step that we need to do is to get back into a nice carving rhythm by resynchronizing our arms with our board. Remember, when you're carving, your front hand goes in the opposite direction of the nose of the board. Now, it's really easy to resynchronize everything because after applying the brakes, your front hand usually drifts to this area right around here. All you have to do now is move your front arm from here out to here. Now your body is back in a normal carving position and you can start doing normal carving again where your front arm and the nose of your board go in the opposite direction. So let's watch that in slow motion. We come around to the last corner of our spin and start to shift our weight to 50-50 between our feet and lean back and slam on the brakes. You can actually see where the water comes up when we brake. Notice where our front hand drifts to. Now we're going to make a quick motion with our front hand and move it from here to over here. And now we're in perfect position to start carving again. That's how you do smooth flowing 360s. Multiple 360s. If you want to do multiple 360s, then you can actually maintain the rotational speed by shifting your board edges during the spin. And as you get really good at shifting your board edges, you can actually use this to increase your rotational speed. The only way to learn this is to go out there and practice spinning and get a good feel for using your edges. Now, what you don't want to do is you don't want to use your arms like you're doing the cabbage patch dance. This is really inefficient and just looks really bad. Just use your board edges to maintain the speed. Don't use your arms. Don't be the cabbage patch guy out on the wave. 360s across the top of the wave. Doing multiple 360s across the top of the wave is more difficult because gravity just wants to pull you down that wave. To prevent this from happening, you need to dig your side edges into the water to keep you from coming down. Where this is going to happen is when you are perpendicular to the current, so your 360s become more of a series of 180 turns with edging in between them to keep you at the top and control where you're going on the wave. Practice your heel and toe stalls to get your edging under control. So what you need to do is you really need to dig those upward edges into the wave as much as possible with that. When you're starting looking forward, you got those heel edges, you're going to be digging those heel edges in, then you're going to go light on your board, you're going to do that 180 turn, now you got your toe edges here, so you're going to have to dig those toe edges in, one, so that you don't start sliding down the wave, that'll keep you up higher, and then having those edges there will maintain the control, then once again we're going to go light, do another 180, now we got our heel edges here, dig those ones in also, and it's just a series of light 180s and then digging whichever edge is towards the top side of the wave. Also, this is a great pattern to learn where you come down the wave and start your 360 rotation in the bottom left corner, spin your first 360 as you're moving across and up the wave to the right side, and then do multiple 360s across the top of the wave. You see really good riders doing this fundamental movement all the time. Here's a quick video of someone who does this pattern as good as anyone out there. This is Mike Pappy. He's a competition rider and runs the Flow Dogs Facebook page. Check this out. He does a lip slide across the top of the wave, comes straight down and does a hard heel side carve into a 360 spin back up to the top right corner and then steers them across the top of the wave and then finishes up with a nice nose stall in the top left corner. Very cool stuff. I love watching this guy ride. Once you get your 360s down, definitely give some of the stuff that he's doing a try. Three odds and ends for you. First, 
there's one minor detail difference in the way that Mike and I do our 360s that I want to point out to you. After Mike does his initial body twist, he brings both of his hands immediately to his stomach. He doesn't use the arm motion where you're grabbing in the air that I use to create a little extra torque. He really doesn't have to because he creates so much torque in his initial upper body twist and also in the way he does his edging. Which is the better way to do it? Whichever way works for you. Try them both and if one feels better to you, then that's the correct one for you. It's a minor difference and everything else that we do is the same, but I really wanted to just point it out to you. Second, you always want to try to improve your 360s to where you're keeping your arms in nice and tight and never moving them around. Now, I have really good 360s, but Mike has great 360s. When Mike does his 360s, he keeps his hands on his stomach nice and tight and never moves them throughout all his spinning. My arms actually dangle to the sides for balance and needs improvement. I also have a friend who likes to keep his arms up here close to his body as he spins. If I was choosing between this and this, then I'd choose Mike's way of doing it, this way, because this lowers your center of gravity and makes it easier. Once again, try them all and see which one works for you. Third, when you're watching the riders on this video like Jade and Mike, you have to remember that these are advanced riders and they're really throwing their weight into their 360s. But when you're at a beginner level, you really want to do these very slow and calm. And as you get better at this over time, then you'll start throwing them much harder. When you do the slow down version of these, you need to still see all of those little details present in them. Start by carving. Do a heavy heel side carve while twisting your body into the spin. Now your lower body follows as your arms pull you around. Put on the brakes by carving against the spin. Then move your front arm into position to reestablish your carving. Easy. Now just practice them a few hundred times and you'll have them down no problem. Up here, up here, up here, ready? <gasps> Cabbage patch! There we go! Cabbage patch!